second, those people who just joined so they can get their audio. And in the meantime, um, Debbie, do oh, you already did it. You're so great. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Oh, I see Brenda's here. Hi, Hello. Brenda. Hello. Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Hi. <laughs> The people with scarves on are in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> it's really cold. It's so oh, cold. Those of us in the Hudson Valley are like, eh. uh, isn't it funny? I know. I almost had gloves on. Uh, yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> I am Sherry Riker Bolu, and my book is to say it now. Thirty-three creative ways to say I love you to the most important people in your life. And I am facilitating the panel today and so happy to see all of you here. Thank you so much to everyone who took time to be here. And we're gonna have all of you, except for Karen and Charlene, if you could mute yourselves so we have a nice clear line for our authors. Thank you so much. So a special welcome to Karen and Charlene. Hello, hello. Welcome. We're so happy you guys are here. And as I said before, I love that you're both wearing that beautiful pink. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, Charlene, why don't we start with you? And if you would introduce yourself, let us know where you're from, hold up your book, and we'll have you share how you are taking care of yourself right now during this time. Okay, I'm Charlene Costanzo. I'm originally from New Jersey. For a while, I have lived in each of the lower 48 states. So, um, but I'm, I'm in Central Florida now, and um, this is the cover of my book. It's not um, published until September 15th, but, and I know that, I don't think you're getting it. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful cover, and I just saw the interior, and it is the sweetest interior. I'm really pleased. I'm looking forward to it. And um, as far as how, uh, the, the title, is the 12 gifts from the garden life lessons for peace and well-being and if any of you know uh sanibel florida it is um their inspirations from the botanical garden there and um i i hope you'll enjoy it <laughs> now uh, some things that i'm doing now um but you know all of my my books are about the 12 gifts within us things that are abstract strength hope joy and I like to use a lot of physical um, anchor things that, you know, help to really anchor the message. So that goes for how I talk about things in the book, but also the stuff that I do at home to um, during this time, or anywhere I am during this time, um, is uh, to really go to my senses, uh, go to nature, but also really, you know, say, what am I smelling, seeing, touching? Um, one of the, my favorite things to do when I'm feeling fear, instead of, um, you know, like pushing it away, denying it, is befriending it. Mm. And I do that by holding an ice cube and feeling the, you know, like fear is like that. It kind of paralyzes us. And, but I just like let it be. And um, it starts to melt right in my hand right away. I kind of love that. That's my intention. So I put it in another little bowl up whatever and you know say yeah hello fear i know <laughs> and um anyway kind of just let it be and i find that even by it's not always that easy of course you know when i faced um i started doing this when i was diagnosed with advanced lymphoma and told there was no cure and so anyway there are times when my fears are sometimes i need a whole cup of ice cubes but anyway that's one of the things that i do um I blow bubbles, I, I love to smell beautiful things, use candles, dance, breathe deeply. Um, last thing I wanna show you now, I, I like to be playful. I was gonna actually make this ahead of time to show you, but I, um, um, I, I, this is going to be a fairy jar in case anybody wants to try this at home. You get a jar and you put glitter in it and you get a glow stick. You get a few glow sticks, and uh, so I'm I'm still a little girl at heart. And, and you open it up and shake it up in there and shake it, and it looks like you have uh, fairies or fireflies. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. being playful helps me during this time. 
Charlene, I love that. Can you hold up your little fairy jar for us again? Oh, I'm sorry that I ran out of time. You know, I had no power for a while. I told you, I didn't even know if I'd be here, but it's not, it's not, I didn't put in the glow stuff yet. I get it, I see. And no, it's got the glitter, but, and you can't see it very well during the day either, but at night it's magnificent. So try it. <laughs> you know, and I also, I just want to tell you, I love what, what you're talking about, about the physical. And of course, from your book, which has so many, I mean, I just like one physical description after another of such, such beautiful and unusual things. But I love that you brought that piece into how you take care of yourself you know, with the ice cubes. What a great practice. Can I add one more thing? I don't want to monopolize, just one more thing. I, another is, I don't have this one mastered yet, but I have learned that if I, you know, bump my lay, my shin on the bed or I close my finger in the drawer, I can be cl clumsy sometimes. And you know, it hurts. And it's, I've learned, and probably some of you have done this too, when I just let go and I just, like let it be and say, isn't that an interesting sensation? I'm not kidding, try this. It becomes that. The pain transforms. I'm trying to do that in life, the bigger things. You know, my heart aches, oh, isn't that, or whatever. But um, I'm just saying, I think that there's possibility there, but I am not there yet. Charlene, I love that. Thank you for adding that in. That's wonderful. And we'll come back to you and you can tell us some more about your book and some ideas from your book. Let's um, let's welcome Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, and uh, I'm so glad to be here. And uh, after listening to Charlene, I'm thinking, my goodness, I'm I'm leading a very dull life in this quarantine. <laughs> uh, but really, what I've discovered in this quarantine, Ellen, oh, well, let me hold up my book first. This I don't know if you can see it, actually, but this is 20 things I know for sure. And uh, it's about cultivating a peaceful life. And, um, but at any rate, what I've discovered in this quarantine is um, that what has helped me the most, and it's really due to my recovery and 12-step rooms, is every day I'm going to at least two meetings on Zoom of AA or Al-Anon. You know, my journey um, began in 1974 in Al-Anon. And um, in 1976, I got sober. So both of those programs have been the core of my life um, for all of these years. And so the, the thing that has helped me most as far as just staying um, stable throughout this whole period is to know that when I check in, with my friends online on Zoom meetings that, that I am connected in a real heartfelt way with those people who are seeking the same kind of guidance that I'm seeking. So that's first and foremost. My day starts out with a telephone call with a group of women and we have been making a call to each other for the last 25 years or so that have a conversation Debbie, about for a second because somebody's Debbie can you is it possible for you to mute people oh awesome thank you thank you okay. so much everybody sorry Karen I just want to be able to hear you you were okay. saying you start with a last for the last 25 years uh, I've been on a morning telephone call with a group of women uh, we are all students of A Course in Miracles, mm -hmm. and so we get on the phone every morning and have a discussion about one of the Course in Miracles lessons. So those are two of the things that are primary to me. And then, and my husband I know is on the other page. Uh, I can't <laughs> see him right now, but I know he is here. But um, this quarantine has ended up being... Um, full of wonderful surprises for us to simply kind of rediscover the joy of being with each other. He is a clarinet player, and so he fills my life with clarinet music. 
because I have this lung disease, I'm not able to go, um, and because it's so awful in Florida anyway, this is the first year in 30 years that we have not gone to Minnesota for the summer months because it hasn't been um, safe for me to make that trip. So he's filling my days with clarinet music and, uh, and our dog Nellie. We have a yellow lab, a five-year-old yellow lab. So every afternoon, the three of us jump into the swimming pool. So it's, it's like, these are all things that we really weren't taking advantage of. And so I have looked at this. Rediscover um, some of those really important things that that are central to my life. But I think that I've been so busy for a long, long time. Um, but one more thing I want to say is that I did in this period of time start another book. And it is book number 30 actually. And uh, Mango is the publisher. And it's another daily meditation book. And it really has been um, provided that central structure as well. So I actually feel like my, my days are rich with activities that um, help me to remember why I have been born and what it is I am in this life to do. So that's just a little bit about who I have discovered uh, during this period of the quarantine. Oh, Karen, so many beautiful things. Oh, I love that. I love the, the phone calls and the Zoom, those connections. It's just the heartfelt connections. And then who's your husband? Do you want to say so we can say hi to him? Yeah, he's on the next page. His name is Joe. Hi, Joe. I see you. There he is. He's just waving his hands. Hey, Joe, thank you. Because that was also so beautiful what you were saying about the ways that you two are connecting with your dog and, you know, finding new ways to connect to one another. It's so beautiful. I feel like, you know, and like you said, you know, kind of, it was so beautiful. I forget exactly how you said it, but sort of rediscovering who you are. The you. Right. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, thank you. And uh, I mean, thanks for that opportunity. I realize this, it kind of is crazy making that there are now 42 people here and I can't look at everybody. I can only look at one page at a time. And I opened up this page to see my husband and our dog Nellie because he always has our dog Nellie close by. And I see Jane and I see Jenny and I see Bruce and I see Pam and I see Allison okay. and uh, I see Barb. I don't see Barb's face, but I know who Barb M is. And it's, it's like, what an incredible, uh, time to up to connect with people and i just want to thank all of the people um for for paying us a visit Aww. yes isn't it true i mean it's such a beautiful beautiful thing i i think too you know to be able to have authors here right so that i know we haven't quite gotten to that part in the the panel yet but where people can ask you questions and talk to you about your your work or whatever um, it's really quite an honor. So again, Karen and Charlene, thank you. And let's give a special shout out to Brenda, our associate publisher at Mango for making all of this possible. And also Debbie, thank you so much for, and I see McKenna here too, or at least I did, I've lost you now, but hi McKenna. McKenna is hi. also popping up. It's nice to see your face. <laughs> Hello. So let's go back, Charlene. Let's talk a little bit about that beautiful, beautiful writing and wisdom in your book. And what would you like to share with us, you know, the wisdom from your book about, you know, what might support people during this time? Hmm. Um, well, I think nature itself, um, not, a, not everybody responds to it the same way. I know that for me, from the time I was probably three years old or something, I loved weeds, you know, just a little, um, everything was a flower. I, I think children, we come into the world that way with a sense of wonder. And I do think that actually another thing that would help us all now is really restoring that. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much stress. I hear we have stress. Stress is described as stress on steroids for us now. And so, you know, I describe some of the simple 
almost playful things that I do, but I do find that really looking at a leaf, going for a walk, and especially when I, I notice something differently, like the sun is behind the leaf and it looks like the leaf is filled, like there's light in the leaf. Mm. You know, it's, um, for me, it's very subtle things that um, I have, uh, wow, experiences. I love wonder and, um, well, I, I, you know, I want to mention what my 12 gifts are. So name them, if I can name them, they're strength, beauty, courage, compassion, hope, joy, uh, talent, imagination, reverence, wisdom, love, and faith. And, um, you know, I've learned, I, I traveled around the country talking about these in schools, shelters, prisons, but so often we use these words and we don't, um, a lot of them, you know, we don't quite grasp, but uh, I would ask people, what do you think is most important or which one's most important to you? And even 20 years ago, so many even young children, they said the kindness one. They may not have don't remember the word compassion, but I do, you know, the book is really, um, I look for compassion in the garden, especially where it is um, on Sanibel. I've been going there for, um, since the 80s. And I, I've gone there after uh, Hurricane Charlie took down all the, um, beautiful trees there and um, I guess what I see in nature I look for is that the strength of spirit the survival how it thrives and I know when we look at it that way and connect with nature um, our souls are enriched nature heals us I mean to stop and be grateful that the trees help us really breathe you know we give us um, our oxygen and I um, one thing the book does, it will definitely, it brings you very much in touch with little tiny things. I even write about no CMs. Anybody live, have no CMs where they live? <laughs> Those uh, things that bite and I even look for the gift in uh, no CMs. But um, certainly each, um, you walk along the paths in the garden and uh, they also bring back a lot of memories for me. The book is memoir-like and people who have read it said what it does is really tap into their memories of uh, times when they felt very connected and when they overcame something and times of strength. You know, we all, uh, besides these touchstone things that I use, I think our touchstone stories, our own, are the things that really um, help us in these times. So remembering, you know, when I was really frightened in the past or when I didn't have hope and you know, when did we use these gifts? That's what my work is all about. Wow, Charlene, yes. And may I, I say something? May I say something? Of course you may. Jump okay. on in. <laughs> right. Uh, Charlene is, I, I really am pleased to see and meet everybody, but Charlene's the only person here <laughs> that I really know, and we've been friends for many years. But Charlene, um, do the folks here know about your website and your inspiration every morning that you offer? Oh, yeah, now this you don't even have to buy the book for. Um, every day I send a touchstone, something called Today's Touchstone out, and it is to be in touch with your strength, your beauty, your courage. Start the day, um, you know, with a quote and a little reflection on that and uh, remind you to, in the day, really look for compassion, beauty, your own inner beauty, outer beauty. Thank you, Carolyn. Yes, and I want to say um, something about that, how I, I have the privilege every morning to read that. That's my first inspiration for each morning. And uh, Charlene was just talking a lot about nature. And I know, was it this morning or yesterday where she talked about, look out to nature, there's a crack in nature. It's, it's everywhere, but cracks are okay, you know. And then she refer, brings that back to your own self. But I want to tell you one sharing success story, if I could quickly. I work with a group of, of women. We call ourselves the Listening Hearts, and we journey together. And these are um, 12 women who have very serious issues. These are women who have struggled all their life, you know, with abusive situations, wherever. I mean, they've been in, in AA, they've been in prison, they've been um, really, really uh, struggling. And one of the women uh, who was um, very um, in danger of taking her own life two months ago um, because of living with an abusive husband and of course being homebound with two children. 
And um, there were two, three weeks that I spent with her on trying to get her to phone and text and whatever. She did not take her life. In fact, she, uh, I, I was sending her Charlene's um, inspirational mornings from time to time. And then one morning she texted me back and said, she signed up for Charlene's morning inspirations. Mm -hmm. And this is something that really connects us. Sometimes she'll text me and comment on what Charlene has said. And I'm so indebted to Charlene for my own inspiration each morning, but for helping to save this woman's life um, at the present time and that she is receiving Charlene's inspiration. So I would encourage everybody to check that out and get on her website. You, you will not be disappointed. You won't not be disappointed. Carolyn, thank you so much. And Brenda just posted that link in the chat. So if anybody wants, and also I will have Charlene, we'll make sure we get it underneath the replay of this call so that people okay, can- Okay, thank you, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. I may just say something about that. I know that we all do that for each other in ways we don't even realize. You know, so often it can be something as, you know, smiling at somebody and you don't know how they're having a bad day and they have a lift. I think we underestimate the value and the impact we have on one another's lives. And, you know, especially during this time now, I think that kindness and the caring, however we show that in small ways is very, very powerful. So beautiful. Yes. And I'm just going to say one more thing about Charlene's book and then we'll move on to, to Karen. But the other thing, Charlene, I wanted to say is that the experience of reading your book, so for, if anyone here hasn't yet read it, put that on your list, but the experience of reading it is so calming. Um, I love, I mean, particularly the language. And so I just wanted to encourage people that, you know, if you're feeling at all stressed, just to, to pick up anywhere in the book, to me, I just found it to be just so, you know, it's peaceful just in the reading of it. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So Karen, let's talk a little bit about, for you, what you'd like to share from your own wisdom from, I know you have, you said you're working on your 30th book. So yeah. whatever you'd like to share with us. Well, first of all, I'd like to say, Charlene, I, I definitely intend to, I read some of your um, daily things before hooking up with you today. And I found them indeed, um, you know, very touching in the important ways. And so I thank you for that. Um, I wrote my first book, Each Day a New Beginning, a daily meditation book. It was published in 1982. And um, it was a daily meditation book for women in uh, recovery, specifically AA. And so that really, um, you know, my own struggle uh, in life is what led me to writing because my primary struggle in life was feeling a connection to um, a higher power. And, and I just didn't. I would go to a meeting and feel that connection and I would leave and somehow feel uh, immediately disconnected. And I discovered through writing that that is where I really found God. And, um, and I, I laugh sometimes saying I will probably um, be writing on my deathbed <laughs> because that is the way I feel my connection to God. And it's the uh, primarily the most successful way for me to feel connected to God. So this particular book and many of the books that I have written are really focused on how we cultivate peace in our lives. And of course, in daily meditation books, and I've written quite a few of those, um, it is really about finding our way in life and finding our way to, um, to really the peaceful journey and, and the peaceful journey without alcohol or drugs uh, to sustain us, but to find it with God as that sustaining force. This newest book, of mine, 20 Things I Know For Sure, was kind of in a, in a sense a culmination um, of so many ideas that I've had over the years that have sustained my life. And, um, and so I wanted to, to just share those 
with in one place with people instead of something from this book and something from that book. And if you don't mind, I'd like to just share some of these very specific ideas rather than try to just say them uh, off the top of my head. Absolutely, please. Um, as I said many times throughout the book, I didn't suddenly become peaceful. And I'm not always peaceful now, far from it. But through daily practice of these principles, my life has become what I had always hoped it would be on most days. I appreciate the upward trajectory of my path and can see that I'm headed where I need to be moment by moment. And then these are some of the beliefs that are highlighted throughout the book. There are two voices in my mind. One is always wrong, always trying to create chaos where none need be. The other voice is quietly loving and will always lead me on a softer journey, which also means that everyone I encounter will be treated more gently as well. Another one, wherever I am, I am meant to be. I believe the same is true for you. And you know, I love that idea that there are no accidents, that, that really I, I believe so strongly that, um, that indeed wherever, whoever we meet on our journey, wherever we are at any one time is the perfect uh, encounter that we're meant to have in, in this trajectory. All healing happens within our relationships, the good ones and the more troubled ones and not overnight either. In fact, our more difficult relationships may be far more advantageous to our spiritual growth. And, you know, I think that's such an important idea and one that I just truly cherish. I, I really believe that all the lessons I, I have come to learn, I came into this life to learn, have been presented to me in one relationship or another. And I also believe that we don't ever have to learn a lesson as it's first presented to us. We can just be unready, like I really was in my first marriage, unready to learn some of the lessons that then I had future opportunities to learn. But those lessons that are mine will be presented until I surrender. And so surrender is such a, an important part of, of I think, enveloping and, um, and, and embracing all of the relationships and all of the experiences in those relationships. Uh, nothing is more fruitful than forgiveness. We can have no inner peace without it. And again, I, I'm, um, I, I was writing for this new book, uh, a meditation today about the idea of forgiveness, in fact. And I, I really think that Forgiveness is that perfect opportunity for us to join with another person. And, and what we are really, from my perspective, what we are seeking in this life is that kind of holy connection with another. And I, I have come to believe that when we have those relationships that are seemingly troubled, it really is God's way of helping us to embrace the idea of forgiveness, because then forgiveness is what really allows us to truly come together with that other person. Um, changing our perspective is the surest way to change our lives. And this, this is, is really embraced in this idea, help me see this differently. And so uh, whenever I am find myself in a situation that with another person that is troubling to me uh, because, of, because of the circumstances, if I just stop and pause and say, help me see this differently, mm -hmm. that's an invitation to that quieter spiritual voice in my mind and that will, and that literally changes for me. It shifts for me. It lowers my shoulders. It changes everything in that moment about how I'm feeling. And so those are just a few of the ideas that I, 
that I talk more at length about in this book. There are 20 of them, and I won't go any further with any of them right now. But, um, but you know, I really think that um, if I can just remember one thing every day, and that one thing is, I am here only to be truly helpful. And that's a prayer that is at, comes early in the book, A Course in Miracles. And I, I love that, and I embrace that idea. If I, am, um, if I just really think that for this day, all I really need to be is truly helpful. And that can be in any way at all. It can be smiling with my eyes behind my mask at the grocery store. You know, there are, there are in these difficult times, it's not as easy because we can't be in each other's presence, but we can certainly pick up the phone and call somebody. We can write a note to somebody. We can let somebody know at a Zoom meeting how much they mean to us. And at the grocery store, we can smile at that clerk, even though we can't touch her and let her know that her presence has been noticed by us. And I think that's the way we heal the planet. I mean, that sounds pretty grandiose, but I really think that we each have been called upon to help this planet heal. And so I look at the quarantine as really giving us an opportunity to heal this planet. So with that, I pass for now. Oh, Karen, so many beautiful things. And I love it because I had also pulled some things from your book that I thought would be particularly helpful. And I think you named about every one of them, which I love, you know, this so, and to tell people too, again, if anyone has not read Karen's book, it's the same thing, as I said, with Charlene's, that just the sense of peacefulness and connectedness, you've used that word a lot. And I love that that's so central, but through your personal stories, you connect us you know, to, to you, and then you connect us to these really amazing principles and, and practices for us. So, oh, and I love what Brenda just said. I just saw that. Brenda says, I love that both Charlene and Karen offer daily grounding, real help, inspiration, and heart wisdom. And it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Yes. I would love to open it up to anyone who's here that if you would like to ask a question to either or both uh, Karen and Charlene, and you could do that in various ways. You can um, post in the chat if you have a question. You can just raise your hand if you're on video because we can see you. Um, or you could do the official hand raising if you hover above participants at the bottom of the screen. A uh, panel will open and you'll see a little button that says raise hand. Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So Rachel. I, actually, I just uh, have to say, it's really funny. Um, when you mentioned your first book, Karen, when I was a teenager in, I think it was 1989 or 90, someone gave me your book when I was in a really, really dark time. And when you said that title, I was just like, no way. <laughs> because it was one of the first books that got me on like my more spiritual path. It was like the second book I read that got me on the spiritual path and helped get me on the trajectory I am now. So it. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you, Rachel. So thank that's you. So awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, no, that's, I might still even have that book on my shelf somewhere because I have like the three first books I ever got, and yours was one of them. So, Yaga. Well, you know where that book should be, Rachel, mm -hmm. on your, on your bed stand. <laughs> yes. Well, I have a rotation. I do quite a bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's been lots of books that have come out since then. I'm sure. I love that. Oh, Rachel, thank you for saying that. Oh, and just you. Because Rachel is another Mango Publishing author, and we're glad to have you here, Rachel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ah, Gina. And Gina, and then I see Kathy. Gina, just, yeah, there you go. There we go. I just want to say, uh, I've been following Charlene Costanzo for over 10 years. 
I met her once at a convention and she was one of the speakers and I bought her book, the, the 12 gifts of birth. And I signed up for her emails and I've gotten her daily emails for over 10 years now. And they, um, they are so inspiring. There are a lot of, a lot of nights, you know, where I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll be worried about something. And I'll be praying to God about it and asking him for some direction. And then I'll quick get out of bed and check my email because I'll, I know between two and three in the morning, I'm going to get an email from Charlene. And when I open it and read it, more mornings than not, it's like having a cup of coffee with God. And that's what he would tell me at that moment. <laughs> about what I was praying about. And it just gives me goosebumps. And so I've just been very, very uh, connected to Charlene's Touchstone Moments because they are just so incredibly beautiful. And um, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say that. And I've also shared them with friends. There'll be a particular one because both of us are dealing with something. And I'll say, you've got to read Charlene's Touchstone Moment today. And I will email it to them. Uh, and then, um, and we're always just, it just uh, can give you a goosebump. And thanks so much, Carolyn, for what you had to share about your friend. Uh, that That's really important. We just don't know when we're sharing those that we could, we could be a breath of life to somebody. And that's it. Charlene, did you want to say something? Yeah, well, I, I want to... Um, I didn't ask these, I didn't set them up and tell them to promote my touchstones, but thank you. Um, I, I want to comment, I see a connection here, and I know we're all into, look at how we're connected, but I wanted to also say, I see the connection with what Gina said, and, you know, Rachel, and let's see, was it um, Chris, somebody who read Karen's book, but Karen, what you said about, um, that we're here at a particular time connecting. I, I read the first chapter of the beginning of your book. There's another aspect I just wanna mention that I think is so important now. And that is that where we are is fine too, you know, like not judge the, you know, the homeless person or anyone because we don't know what our soul's journey is on this life. So, I mean, I think you said that, in, don't you? Mm -hmm. You say that's one of your th th 20 things you know? You know, it's like, it's, um, I mean, we want to help one another, but without saying this life is better than that life or something, right. it's, you know, that we're all valuable and what we're experiencing right now is of value, even this, and it was what you said. And um, I know we're all saying, uh, our hearts are saying the same thing in different ways, I think, you know, especially those of us who are, you know, asking for guidance and, well, anyway, I just want to say, I love you all and I'm so, uh, thank you for coming. And now I'll be quiet and you ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So I have Kathy and then Vivian. So let's go to Kathy. Make sure you unmute yourself. There you are. Hi, I'm Hi. Kathy. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working out of I'm abundance. I don't believe that I'm worth it, you know? And I've always had this, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's negative, but what? Accepting abundance is difficult. How did you handle it? Or what, what, did, what item did you come to, to believe that, that helped you over the hump? That's it. Are you talking to me or? Sure, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think for sure when I um, was a child, Mm -hmm. I was chronically depressed and I never felt like mm -hmm. I counted for anything. I never felt like I was a worthy person within my family. And mm -hmm. I grew up in a real rageaholic family. So at 13, I took my first drink and thought, aha, that's the answer. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll drink, that's my solution. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think that for me, what was the, what became a turning point, it wasn't just getting sober, but it was that early in my recovery, about 18 months into my recovery, I was very suicidal. And that wasn't the first time I had been suicidal in my life. Uh, 
But at 18 months into recovery, kind of much to my surprise, because here I was sober and the idea of drinking certainly never even occurred to me, but taking my life uh, was very appealing. And I had it completely planned out. Uh, I was, I had quit teaching my courses at the university. I was getting a PhD at the time at the University of Minnesota. I had just hidden out in my, in my apartment and uh, I was going to turn on the gas. And it, um, it absolutely made sense. And, uh, and then there was a knock at my door and I certainly was not expecting anybody. And um, I was, I ignored it initially. But then it was a very persistent knock. So I ended up, because I lived right next to a, an elderly woman, and I was afraid she was going to be disturbed. So I went to the door, and I opened it. And there stood a very tall, stately, very attractive, red-haired woman who said, we have an appointment. My name is Pat. And she pulled out her daily planner. That's how long ago this was, you guys. Uh, she pulled out her daily planner and showed me my name in her daily planner. I had never set eyes on that woman before. And uh, she said, I'm a financial advisor and we're here to talk about your finances. Well, I lived in a hundred dollar a month apartment. You know, I mean, I, I was teaching, as I said, at the university as a lowly instructor. And she just kind of pushed her way into my apartment and um, sat down at my kitchen table and then said, are you okay? And I was, I absolutely kind of melted because she was suddenly seemed so kind. And I said, I am very depressed. And she began to talk to me about depression. No. And she said to me, in fact, she said to me, in fact, you know, what you're experiencing has a name, and she gave it the name chemicalization, and she said, you are really on the precipice of a whole new spiritual understanding. And she talked to me about that for a while, and I, I suddenly felt this darkness lift, but I really didn't understand either what was happening. But then she got up. She got up and walked to the door and turned back and put her arms around me and said, you know, you're going to be just fine. And she walked out. I never saw her again, of course. And I became uh, convinced that she was um, the angel that had come to save my life. And that may sound weird to some of you, but as a result of that, I, I've certainly come to believe that we really do have hovering angels who are, uh, who are present to help us. And had Pat not appeared, a woman who I didn't know, who I'd never seen before, who I never saw again, had she not appeared at my door, I would never be here today. And so that, when I realized, Kathy, what, what that was about, when I realized that God really is always very present. Then I began to feel a sense of worthiness that evidently I'm okay. I have been worth saving. And it really shifted me into a whole new place. I won't say I never had depression again. I've been struggling with that. I've been on medication for years, but I never ever doubted again that I had a place in this life and that I had a perfect place in this life and that there was always this presence surrounding me. So my hope is that you can feel that you wouldn't be here among us today if that present were, presence weren't taking care of you too. Because I really believe that's where our central worthiness comes from. I hope that answers something for you. Kathy, we can't, you're muted. If you wanted to say anything. We... It did, it touches something and thank you for your books. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> they, were, they were a lifesaver for me then and they are still. Thank, thank you. you.
Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Vivian. Hi, Vivian. Sorry. Hi, Sherry. You don't know me, but you know me. <laughs> That's all I got to say. You know you, you know me. That's it. End of story. Um, I am so affected by the God that loves me and you guys. I call him our father. Our father is the bomb diggity dig dong dong. That's all I got to say. He is tremendous. Um, this is truly a gift from God. Um, and he looks just like you guys. Isn't that wonderful? Um, I've been receiving gifts a lot today. And I just came out of a really bad, depleted place. And I needed my cup restored, filled again. I am a giver. I, I show up, Karen, how can I help others? But I was depleted. I'm going to tell you, I was on emotional zero, emotional zero. I was done, Charlene, done, done, done. Couldn't do it. And I surrendered. I surrendered. You know, it's a wonderful thing to surrender. I like, Karen, when you said, when you started visualizing what that looks like, your shoulders get, ah, you, you, you know, you, you, you begin to get the load off. And um, it, I, I want to admit and confess that it didn't, it wasn't pretty. It didn't look pretty. Uh -uh. It did not look pretty. Okay, it's not tears, calling people, you know, all of that stuff. It took what it took. And um, part of me might have been unready. And I love it, except that I'm in the point of being unready. I love, how do y'all swag with these words? I call, you know, I, I had text my girlfriend, I said, these people got swag. And when you have swag, it's another word for slang, Charlene and Kate, Karen. It's like, you swag it, you dance it, you twerk the words, so it's like, it comes, it, it, it comes alive. It comes alive. And um, your words today have come alive in, in me. You know, so I thank you guys so much. Um, and I have an angel, a personal angel. <laughs> she showed up at the doorstep when I was in my, one of my, one of my times. Thank you, God, I did not want to turn the gas on. But I was definitely... You know, and whenever I get depleted, guys, whenever I get depleted, something like this happens. I, I meet Charlene. I meet an author of a book that I've been studying forever and like saying to her, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got to meet you. I got to meet you. I got to meet you. I want to know how the blank you went through the Course in Miracles and understood it. That's what I want to know. How the, who does that? Who, who does that? And then you got you got the omelgated goal to write a meditation book around it. And me and you, you might not know me, but you know me. Me and you have conversations every morning. And then my angel gave me a wish beyond my wildest dreams. She said to me, there's an event on right now and you can meet your Pete. You can meet your you can meet your girl. So I am not tearing today because I don't feel I've cried enough. And and I ha, and I'm a joy filled woman. I, I'm a liver of joy. I I am. This is my story. Today meditation talked about wherever I am is where I'm supposed to be. I think Charlene talked about it as well. Um, and I had to put a little swag on it too because wherever I am where I am right now in this chapter of my life is where I'm supposed to be. And so that I need to leave it there because I know there's so many more amazing, phenomenal things that are gonna happen. My question to you though, I do have a question. Um, and, and I am gonna invest um, in you, Charlene. I am going to definitely buy your book. You are on my radar. As soon as Amazon, I will boom, buy. Karen, when did you begin, or when did the Course in Miracles begin to influence your writing? I, I was sent 
a set of the course books when it was three books back in 1980. Whoa. And um, when I first looked at them, um, like, like you were sharing, I took one look at them and thought, this isn't for me. This is, this is beyond me. And, but I, I kept being tugged back to the, and at that point, the workbook was separate from the text. And I, I kept being kind of tugged back to it. And I made up my mind. I am so persistent when I make up my mind to do something. I made up my mind that every day I was going to read a lesson in the course. And it didn't make any difference if I didn't understand it. I was going to read it anyway. And if I needed to read it a second day, I would. I did not get through that in one year because there were lots of lessons I had to reread more than one day. But I, I must tell you that I have been studying the course for um, more than 30 years. And I, I can tell you that it isn't, it, it is the kind of thing that it, it's really easy to feel overwhelmed by. But what I tell, I have a group that meets at my home. Now we're doing it on Zoom. But what I just remind people all the time is if we're not ready to understand something right now, that's okay. The next time we come to it, we will. And, you know, I look at the course like I look at AA and Al-Anon. I won't ever quit going to AA and Al-Anon. I won't ever quit being a student of A Course in Miracles. Another book I wrote for the course was 52 Ways to Live the Course in Miracles. And, and it was, it's really a, a, study, a study book, kind of, to take one chapter per week. And the, in Minneapolis, there are some groups that do that. And um, Chris right here, who's waving her hand, is one of them that got involved at the very beginning of, of that entire endeavor with that book. But it isn't something that you don't ever give up, Vivian. It's like we don't give up on AA or Al-Anon. We don't give up on any spiritual path that we're on, really. We know that every single day, we'll make a little bit of progress, and that's all that matters. And, mm -hmm. and if I, and I read it every day, and not every day do I feel after 30 years, do I understand what I just read, and I don't even care. I simply read it anyway, because mm -hmm. I figure that the next time I pick up that one, because I'll be reading it again next year, God willing, uh, I mean, I'm only 81, I expect to live a few more years, by, by the time I read it again next year, guess what? I may understand it perfectly. And if I don't, even then, it doesn't matter. It's the practice. It's like anything else we're doing. It's about the practice of doing it. And all the things that Charlene was saying too, it's about practicing these things every day. And um, you know that's what changes our lives and changes the lives of those who are around us as well, I think. Thank you, Karen. Thank yeah. you very much. Hi, my name is Michelle. I just wanted to pop in really, really quick because it's right with what Karen was just saying. I put in the chat um, a link for, to email me. We, we have a 52 Ways book study on Friday at 11. Um, it's here in Minnesota, but it's on Zoom now. And we have people from out of state. So if anyone has any interest in joining that, much easier to understand the Lord of Miracles book study, we'd love to have other people join us. Thank you, Michelle. And that link is in the um, in the chat. And I know Brenda had her hand raised, and then I saw a couple other people. Let's go to Brenda. And sure, I'll just go very quickly. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank um, Vivian because, as an editor, like now I can write back to authors. Not these uh, were twerkers, obviously, but but maybe first time authors and say, "Not enough swag, more <laughs> swag." So I love that. That made my day. And then also Karen is part of the reason I'm even in publishing because um, I um, had um, decided to make a big career change um, in the early 90s. And um, I had my eye on being in publishing because all I wanted to do was like read books and talk about books. And so um, Harper San Francisco, which was the San Francisco division of Harper Collins, was having a boom time because they were publishing Karen Casey's books. Uh, the Hazelden um, meditation books, and then also 
codependent no more was you know just like selling like crazy and because those books were um selling thousands of copies a week and helping so many people because recovery was really opening up i think is sort of coming out of the church basement you know people were weren't afraid to like go to recovery meetings and get that help they needed. And so I just want to say thank you to Karen because it was the re the recovery movement is the reason I have a job in publishing. And so how lucky am I to get to work with Karen? It feels very full circle to me. Wow, so. thank you, Brenda. It has come full circle and I'm delighted as well to be part of the Mango family. Yes. And um, uh, Debbie and other people at Mango can tell you that like all the time I'm saying, I can't believe we get to publish like the long awaited sequel to <laughs> each day a new beginning. Like I, I just can't get over that. Like, so I'm so grateful. And, uh, and, and um, you know, I know that uh, both you and Charlene, your words in book form or wherever quotes on Pinterest or whatever, they are daily touchstones and lifelines for people. Oh. And, you know, I don't know how Charlene uh, would describe it, but, you know, who knew when I was that 13-year-old having Coke and whiskey for the first time <laughs> that this was the journey God had planned for me? You know, it, I, I was terrified uh, of everything at that period of time. And, um, and but I, I look at my life and I see truly that every single aspect of it was one of the threads that led me into the very next perfect part of my life. So, you know, even though there are parts of my story that aren't pretty, I do believe that every part of my story has been necessary for me to become who I am at this point. And I, I feel, and I, I think that Charlene, from what she was saying, must feel the same way too really lucky that this is how my life has has progressed and you know to sit here in my study and look out at this entire uh, screen of of hollywood squares that you can't even get on one page you know <laughs> i mean how lucky can charlene and i be that all of you wanted to show up and participate in an event that um Mango and Sherry have provided for us. So I'm just so grateful. Oh, and Karen, I'm so struck that if it weren't for you, none of us would be here on this Zoom right now, right? <laughs> if you're responsible for Brenda and Brenda's responsible for so many of us being here, isn't that wonderful? Like here you are unknowingly providing this beautiful community. I love that. Yeah, oh, it, it's, it wasn't my plan. It was God's plan. I will not take credit for it. All the credit goes to my higher power. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't get it. I mean, I, I sometimes pinch myself and think, how in the world did this happen? And probably my parents are still saying up there in heaven, how in the world has this really happened? Wow. <laughs> I just don't to the time and I wanted to make sure Charlene had oh was yeah I, I want to offer something for consideration it's another way of looking at at things which Karen you talked about but I know anytime um, you know we all at times I know feel unworthy to some degree not good enough you know but I and I know that I heard some of you say admiring things um, well today you know you may have seen things in me and in Karen and you do in other people, but you would, whenever you see something that you admire in someone, oh, isn't she talented or that or courageous or something, if it wasn't in you, you would not see it in that person. So when you see something, say, you know, that's, that's in me too. Take it back. And I think that's one way to help with a worthiness. Um, so when you see the beauty, Oh, and I, I want to say also that I think even in the t t times in our life that don't look very pretty, I don't know, there's beauty there too, because it's human life, you know, and it's how we live and grow and heal. And um, I, I think embracing it all, and I just want to embrace, give all of you a big hug right now. And thank you, Brenda. Thank you, everyone. Thank Mango.
Thank you. Um, that's so beautiful, Charlene. This has been such an amazing hour. And I too just, I wanna thank all of you for being here, all these beautiful faces. And the, the beauty that Karen and Charlene and everyone else who has shared has brought to this moment. I mean, it has, it's exactly what you guys are talking about. I, I feel the peacefulness being here with all of you. And I just want to thank both of you, Karen and Charlene, and thank you, Mango, and thank you for everyone who came to listen. I will be posting the replay, and underneath it, we'll put the links to Karen and Charlene's books. Please, please support this publishing house and support these two beautiful writers. And um, we're here every Wednesday. I know that McKenna had posted in the chat that there's a new Facebook group if you're interested in you know, joining that to be aware of when we have these kind of author events, we would love to see you again. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank have you everybody. Thank you. thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.